Good. Can see. Right. Um, so, item 30, um, the, eight, the report on the HTS Group 2018 to 2020. I'm going to move that report. And I formally second, Chair. Thank you. <coughs> um, cabinets and uh, councillors and members of the public, we're faced with a national housing shortage. Over the last 50 years, the national supply of houses built has been less than half of the demand. This, together with the decimation of council housing stock brought about by Conservative governments that forced councils into sales, while at the same time handcuffing them by not allowing the proceeds to be reinvested into building more housing, has led to an explosion in private rents, many of which are unaffordable and which provide only short-term insecure tenancies. In Harlow, these Tory policies have resulted in our council housing stock being reduced from a peak of 24,000 to just 9,200 today. 9,200. And that's with a waiting list for 4,095 dwellings. It's clear we simply do not have sufficient council housing to meet demand. The proposals in this report mark an attempt to address this issue in a new way, providing the genuinely affordable and secure housing our town needs. In parts A and B, we set out, in line with the proposals from the 2017-2047 uh, HRA business plan, how we intend to create 14 new dwellings in the years 2018-2019. Uh, These dwellings can be delivered by HDS Property and Environment, Harlow's own local authority trading company, so that the Harlow pound is spent in Harlow to the benefit of Harlow businesses and so that any profits can be reinvested in Harlow for the benefit of Harlow residents. Part C, D and E proposes the creation of a new subsidiary company under HTS Group to be known as HTS Housing and Regeneration to provide us with the flexibility needed to complete larger house building projects across the town and to enable us to meet the potential we have identified to create 80 new dwellings over the next three years and further our ambitious plans beyond them. The LGA chairman, Lord Gorter, said, our national housing shortage is one of the most pressing issues we face, and as a nation, we have no chance of housing supply meeting demand unless councils can build again. Tory MP Nicky Morgan said, the potential of local authorities to build should be unleashed. But the Telegraph commented that the measures in the last budget meant to stimulate supply will have only a limited impact on the number of houses that can be built. National Tory government policy continues to fail to deliver that basic human right, decent, affordable, secure housing. Through these measures and others to follow, this Labour Council intends to do what it can to address the problem. We will endeavour to not only continue to provide more and better homes, but more and better homes on long-term tenancies that are truly affordable, giving young people a chance to live independently, families security of tenure so they can bring up their children, and to provide for the elderly so that they can enjoy dignity in retirement. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Councillor Wilkinson. I'll, reserve, well, I'll make some comments when we have comments after the questions, Chair. Any questions? Mm -hmm. We've got questions. questions. We've got comments. Okay, so I've got questions. I'll move on to comments, then, please. No, I'll second it, so I'll sum it up. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. I, um, I'm very tempted to uh, make a lot of. Uh, uh, sarcastic comments about the 1st of February, but uh, I'll, I'll just uh, leave it at uh, uh, whether well, to laugh or to uh, report a hijacking of a policy. Uh, oh, there's, there's a, so much in here is uh, a lift from our uh, amendment on the 1st of February, that, uh, which was then sort of voted down quite uh, resolutely, so I'm uh, very surprised to see it back. However, I, I think we are all agreed, uh, there is no doubt about it, there is not enough houses. Uh, being built. Uh, one of the big issues, of course, is where can you build them? Uh, and this is obviously what the local plan is about. I, 
I'm also uh, pleased to see that the current Labour administration has uh, rejected the, uh, the Blairite policies of the 90s, uh, when there are two years under, under Blair when only 60 council houses were built in the entire country. Uh, <coughs> that figure has uh, continued, well, has started to rise uh, in the last six years. <coughs> but uh, trying to blame all ills of the world on, the, on conservative mm -hmm. policy uh, is not going to uh, cut the mustard. Labour did not build uh, council houses on either, uh, and one of Councillor Wilkinson's predecessors did actually recognise that fact. Um, you, you say there are over 4,000 people on the waiting list. Well, I have to point out to you, we don't have a waiting list. We've not had a waiting list for very many years. It's a, it's a housing needs register. It all depends on the urgency that people, uh, people require them. Um, <coughs> most of the, the vast majority of people on the housing needs register are already housed, but it may just not be suitable accommodation for them. Um, <coughs> Obviously, the, the thrust of the report we, we obviously welcome because it's what we proposed in February uh, and you at that stage were not prepared to embrace. I think the expression used then was it wasn't town-wide. Well, with the resources available to the uh, uh, opposition, it's very difficult to actually drill down into uh, the council's records and plans and proposals uh, to try and identify that because the, council, uh, because the officers won't tell us. Um, uh, they can't. So, as I say, it is very welcome. Um, I don't have to de declare an interest being being an executive director because I'm not a voting member of this committee. Uh, but certainly, from the point of view of uh, the HCS group, it is also very welcome, and uh, we look forward to the challenge. Thank you, Councillor Carter. Any more comments? Um, Councillor Danvers. Well, I think uh, Simon's comments need to uh, be addressed. No. He can be as sarcastic as he likes, but in fact the Tories limited proposal in February was just yeah. confined to one area, and that was the area of Old Harlow. Um, the regeneration of the housing stock uh, during the Blair and Brown years, it was deplorable that they didn't actually get on and build houses, but at least they actually regenerated millions of, in fact, in our own programme, in terms of actual decent bathrooms, decent, um, decent kitchens. Okay. Um, okay. All over the country. Sorry, Chair, can I? I'm going to be heckled. As, uh, um, after years of neglect, the, Tor the Tories, in fact, even stopped council and house sales receipts being spent on future council and house building, and then they started taking the money to the Treasury. Um, the Tories refused to actually face the fact that 4,000 families at least are in housing need. You can call it what you like. It's a waiting list. People are actually in desperate need of housing. And in those circumstances, we've registered that need, and that need is not being fulfilled in this town alone. It's multiplied by millions. 30 billion pounds of public money goes to private landlords in this country to actually subsidize the private rented sector. It is an absolute disgrace. 30 billion pounds a year would actually buy the housing that we actually need uh, in terms of house building for the whole country. We need to reprioritise, and this local authority clearly is doing that. The last thing is, Chair, I'm sure the officers are embarrassed by what's been said, but the idea that the officers' doors are not open to members of the opposition is quite, quite wrong. Thank you, Councillor Landers. Councillor... Charles. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, the fact of the matter about council houses and who build what is very clear. It's been fact-checked over the years. But the, um, under the Conservatives in coalition, and now as a single party, over the last near eight years, more council houses have been built than there were built under the last Labour government. And that's a fact. And you look at the reports and the statistics that have been banded around, but it has been fact-checked. What I want to say tonight about this report is, is one clear thing. I think this is a really positive report. And actually, yes, at the full council in February, we set out a statement of intention as a group that we wanted this council to build more council houses. So tonight, in fairness to the Cabinet, they are putting that in motion. And they're putting in motion a Conservative policy to build more council houses. 
We set out a small <coughs> programme that had implications town-wide, and it is good news that people will be able to access in years to come good quality, affordable council houses, and that's a priority for all our residents, irrespective of our political colours, actually housing is at the forefront of all of our minds. Thank you. Councillor Yeah, thank you, Chair. I mean, obviously, I'll start where Councillor Dab has started, and, and actually, I've got in front of me right now, I've got the Conservative Amendment, and Councillor Davids is quite correct. But, but just to specify, it wasn't just Old Cardo, they named Chippingfield. They actually had a one off site which they wanted in their amendment to build council houses. And on a site, by the way, we don't actually own. Um, the numbers didn't stack up. Um, it's just, it was just a folly at the time because they wanted to agree with our budget because it was so good, they had nothing to attack, so they come up with a folly of idea that didn't stack up. Returning to tonight's report, I'm really pleased that this has come to Cabinet and firstly I'd like to thank a lot of hard work by the officers, housing officers and other officers involved that, that spent a long time putting this together. It's a massive step forward for this town and shows you our priorities and our corporate priorities the Tories, when in power, didn't have housing at the top of their corporate priorities. We do. Um, so I'm pleased this is coming to tonight. It's very timely. We have ambitious plans for the town. We've got a new local plan. We're generation of the town centre, a garden town development. This report sets out this administration's further thinking on scale and ambition. It recognises the needs to use all available opportunities, maximise the investment capacity in order to deliver more and better housing for the town and regeneration. As I've said many times, the council has ambition to build new homes in all centres to meet the acute housing need and at the beginnings of a programme to do so. Our top priority, and for the administration and myself, is housing. More importantly, building council housing. We are seeking all opportunities to achieve this. I'm keen on the HTS group to expand, and I will go on about that later. This is the right time to do this in support of the Council's corporate objectives. I'm also very keen for the Council to have a greater stewardship role with its companies. We are, we are local representatives with public money and we have significant challenges to address, which include the development of the local plan, regenerating the town and creating a more modern garden village. I've already allocated money within the budget in the short term initial work to provide additional HRA accommodation including the conversion and modernisation of properties in Hare Street and Collins Meadow, which I mentioned at the budget, budget back in February. We want to provide more temporary accommodation in Partridge Court to provide an additional unit, and in 2018-19, we'll undertake more work at Summers Farm to provide six units, all council building, all for council tenure. In addition, as part of the garage strategy, we will be redevelopment derelict garage sites and commence and prioritising council housing in the short term. I am keen to move forward with this initiative and for the, f and the further development of our exciting plans. We have to remember that under four years of Tory run Harlow Council, they built zero council housing. Under our tenure, and my predecessor, Patrick Rodgerian, we built the first council houses in this town for 30 years saying that this administration is very proud of. But we don't want us to stop there. We want to, we want to develop, we want to move forward, we want to carry that work on. And I'm also pleased that we're going to do this under the umbrella of HTS. HTS, a success story. A story which the opposition opposed all the way. And I've got a quote from them here. They, it was an idea that hadn't been thought through properly. Well, a year on, it's an idea that's a success story. It's paid dividends to this town, and it's about time, as we always said many, many years ago, Councillor Ing Ingalls' predecessor had the same visions as well, that HTS will not stand alone in p &E. We were always going to develop more umbrella organisations under HTS, and the, the right place to start is building council housing and improving regeneration in this town. That's our vision. It's going to be... It, H HTS p &E has been a success story, and I've no doubt this new venture will uh, be a success story, and I look forward to years to come of more council housing in this town. Thank you, Chair. Right, in the absence of any further comments, let's move on to Councillor Dabbers. Councillor Dabbers, you've got the floor. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Dabbers. 